Hello everyone, welcome back. I got a bunch of requests to do a part 3 to my Majora's Mask series, and I figured, why not? I mean, there's a bunch of other tricks that I haven't haven't explained and that I could do, and a bunch of things that I've actually figured out on my own, such as doing this without pause buffering, like that. There we go. I've been practicing doing that and a bunch of other things, so... I guess I'll give you a few tips on that. I'm trying to do the gainer without uh, pause buffering. Really the only tip I can give you is try and release the Z button just before you backflip. Like, like oh, not even a second before you backflip. Just try to get the timing down on that. And that's pretty much the whole thing is just getting timing. And uh, this bomb jump I did here, I'm just showing you another area you can go bomb jump and then get back to an unloaded area. Kind of like... Kinda like how you can do from this this one up here at the chest. That's usually up here, and then you can bomb jump over and go to the other side. Speaking of, I need to correct myself on something that I said last time. I said that it is not possible to get up there without the hook shot. I am, however, mistaken. There is a way to get up there without needing the hook shot. You need a, of course, the Zora mask to be able to do the bomb jump over to the treasure chest shop on top of that. But, you don't need the hook shot to get to the chest. It's a little bit of a longer route. But basically what you need to do is get to the very edge of this platform and aim for this awning right here. Right here at the bottom. Now, you can use a bomb, any, any kind of explosive, but I personally prefer using the blast mask. I just, I don't know why, it just, it just seems cool to do it that way. And I messed up, of course. Basically what you're trying to do here is a trick called the recoil flip, which if you're familiar with hovering, this is basically the same principle. You're doing the same thing you do to hover, except that you're not using, not activating the infinite sword glitch, and in a, in consequence, you're not actually sticking in the air, but you're getting a huge boost backwards instead. So, I'm going to get to the very edge of this platform, aim for that awning, turn around, blast mask, boom, there we go, make it to there. Now, now you pull out the Zora mask. I can get over to it. There we go. And then, as a mask, you roll jump to here. And then, aim for that awning. Roll jump, and then jump attack. And you should make it to there. And then, just make it to the platform. And bam! And you can just do the bomb jump, jump, bomb jump over, and you're there. So, I just wanted to correct myself on that. Now, the next thing I want to explain. Um... As I said, I got a bunch of requ requests for part three, but I also got a request to um, explain more about hovering, because apparently there's someone out there who's having trouble with hovering, and they wanted me to kind of explain how it goes so they can try and do it a little better. So, I'm going to use this sign as an example. I'm going to get an infinite sword glitch off the sign. I'm going to go up here to the top of the clock tower just to kind of get an ex or actually, I think that messed me up. Yes, it did. Okay. Never, never mind. I'm not going to use the tower. Okay. So, after I get the infinite sword glitched, one thing about bomb hovering is that you need to do it off of a ledge. Otherwise, it's very, it's much more difficult to do it off straight off the ground. So, off the ledge, basically backflip and then pull out a bomb chew and shield it. You can use bomb chews or bombs, either one. Both of them work this pretty much the same exact way, except for bombs, you need to you have to get the timing down for using them. It's about when it starts flashing really fast is when you drop it. Like right there. Bam. It, al it also depends if you blow yourself up. No. It also depends on if you want more height or more distance, depending on when you drop it. And it's also just, it's kind of variable for that, whereas bomb chews are pretty much spot on with, what you, with that. So, I wanted to kind of explain a little bit more about that. I will say that, as I did in the last episode, you can do bomb hovering straight off the ground, but you have to do two hovers in a row, otherwise the game will put you straight back onto the ground like it just did there. So you have to do two in a row, or multiple ones in a row, before it will do that. So, that's it for that. The other thing I could show you guys is Econa Canyon. I remember... If you, if you remember, back in one of the parts, I forget exactly which one it was, 
But I was talking about the, uh, the beneath the well and getting to the mirror shield. I was trying to hover over that huge sunblock and get into the get to the mirror shield early. Well, it turns out there's actually a different glitch you can use to go under the sunblock and get and get into there. So I will go ahead and do that right now and show you what trick that's called and all that. So. Pretty much from the from the uh, moment you get here at Econa, you can go get the mirror shields. So you don't have to. You don't if you have uh, the the well is. If you remember that, it's really annoying to have to go get all of the uh, things for that. But if you just do a gainer right here with the Zora mask, if I can do it, there we go. And then just go over here. Now the trick I'm going to be showing you guys. Is a very complicated trick and if you don't do it right your game can crash depending on what version of the game you're using so I'm gonna get down here and then I'm gonna explain I'm going to be doing a glitch called the weird shot now like as I said the weird shot varies between the versions of the game that you're playing if you're playing on the Japanese version the weird shots are a lot more lenient but on the I'm playing on the American version at the moment and the American version is very finicky about its weird shots so basically Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a bomb there, shield the hook shot, and then roll this bomb at the precise moment and hold left. And then pause buffer to a specific frame. I think I rolled too early. Yep, rolled too early. Okay. So, try this again. Okay, now. Pause buffer to a specific frame. I still rolled too early. Dang it. I'll explain this a little bit better in a second. If I can, once I, once I do it, I'll explain it a little bit better. Okay. Now, I believe I got it. Pause buffer to the next frame. Nope, I still rolled too early. Dang it. Come on. Oh, I, I messed that up. Definitely. So basically, okay. So I'll try to explain a little bit here since I'm kind of failing. I rolled too late there, I think. Nope, I think I got it. Okay. Pause buffer to the frame where you see the red explody damage effect. If I can get it. Come on. That one right there. Now. Gonna pause buffer the hook shot, and then one more frame, and then release, and bam, we are under the ground. This is the weird shot, basically, right here. So, and then you can just hook shot the torch, like so. Come on, there we go, and you're in. And then all you need to do is fire arrows and Deku stick, or you could fire all all of them if you want, but it's just faster. Fire arrow and Deku stick. Light all the torches, and bam, you have the mirror shield. So, if the well's giving you all sorts of uh, all sorts of issues, that's all you need to do. Okay, so I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna show, kind of explain what the, more of what the trick does and how you set it up, because I didn't do a very good job of explaining that. So give me a second, and I will be back behind the sunblock. Okay, we're back here behind this. Now, let me try to do. Let me do a better job of explaining the trick. So, I get over here in this corner, and you need to hold Z target pretty much through the entire thing. Drop a bomb behind you. Pull out the hook shot and shield it before the animation comes. This is very, very. It's a very fast trick, so I'll try to explain it a little bit as I go through. All right. So what I just did there. Let me kind of explain a little bit. Pause here and explain. I went to the corner and then I held the Z. You pretty much have to hold Z through the entire trick. And then I dropped the bomb behind me. Since you have to hold Z and then you have to go behind the bomb a little bit, I just go ahead and kill two birds with one stone and backflip and drop the bomb in midair. So that puts me a little bit behind the bomb. And so you need to go a little bit to the side of the bomb so you can see how the bomb is flashing so you know when to roll at it. And then when when it starts rolling pretty, f when you start the bomb starts flashing really fast. Then you roll at it, and during the roll, you need to hold left. And then during that roll, I think I rolled a little bit, I rolled too early there. During your roll, you need to hold left. This is very important. Hold left. And then after, during your roll, you need to pause buffer to the specific frame where you see the red explodey damage effect on Link. I think it's the very next frame. If I can get one more frame. Nope, one more. One more. One more. Right here. Now, on this frame, buffer the hook shot. Like that. 
And then you need to buffer one or two more frames. I'll do two this time. I did one last time. Now you have to make sure it's one or two. If you buffer more than two on the American version, your game will crash. So that's why I was talking about how the Japanese version is more, is the American version is more finicky with its weird shots. See, I'm over here to the right this time, and I can move, moving around is really weird with this uh, two frame one. And the last time I just went straight under, but the second one, buffer two frames, you get over to the side. And kind of move around in this weird little circular motion. Instead of aiming to the side, you actually might kind of move around. It's kind of weird to explain. It's better if you do this and then do the experience it for yourself. But yeah, that's basically the weird shot. I hope I did an okay job of explaining that. I'll one, Once more, so just make sure. I went to the side. I dropped a bomb behind me. Oh, that's not it. I went to the side, dropped a bomb behind me, shielded the hook shot, rolled, held left, paused off to the, the red explodey frame, and then buffered the hook shot, and buffered one more frame. If, I'll uh, link to the article in the description for so you, so you can get a better explanation of what I did there. Uh, what else could we do here? I mean, that was pretty much the bulk of the other things that I was wanting to show you guys. Uh, hmm. Give me one second here. Let's see. Look at the map. Great Bay, Zora Hall, Ramoni Ridge, DP Palace, Woodfall, Town, Snowhead, Iconic Canyon, Stone. Oh, that's the other thing I wanted to show you guys. Okay. One last thing. It's probably going to be a shorter video than last time, but that's okay. Okay, Song of Soaring. I'm going to go to the Stone Tower and show you off another glitch that allows you to basically. If you remember, if you remember going through this place, remember going to the Stone Tower Temple and having to use the Elegy of Emptiness to put the statues on the switches so you can get across the temple. There is a specific glitch you can use so you don't have to do that. And you can use bomb hovering and everything to completely skip getting the Elegy of Emptiness throughout the entire game, if you so wish. So the first step is to go over and grab this fairy. You can use any kind of bottled item, but the fairy just makes this easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually get onto this switch a certain way. Let me give me a second to remember which which side of the switch I need to get on. I need to get the camera that way, pointing this way. Okay. So I backflip onto the switch. And now I need to lock and shield. Lock and shield and try to use the fairy at the same time. If I do this right. Like that. Okay. Now. Now I run over to the switch. Run over to the block. And then hit C up. Come on, what? What? It's not letting me hit C up. That's weird. This is very weird. I know this glitch was weird, but usually when you hit C up, it cancels it. Um, did I break something? I think I broke something. Uh, okay, let's do this. Do it this way then. Let's fall. Let's fall to our death and respawn. That'll give us another shot at this. Okay. I still have the fairy too, so we can do that. All right. Let's try this again. This time, preferably without failure. So get on the switch. I need to be facing this way because when you so you can see where you're actually going. Lock and shield. Actually, crap. I can't use the fairy this time. I have to. I have to make sure the bottle is out from using it. Let's see if the fairy respawns. I think I might need a Song of Soaring back. Otherwise, uh, oh, the fairy respawns. Nope. Okay, so I'm gonna have to Song of Soaring back. That was very weird, though. The specific glitch I'm doing right here is called Time Stop. It's If you've seen speedruns of this game, you've definitely seen it used. Because they completely skip using getting the Elegy of Emptiness, and they do all sorts of bomb hovering. And other such glitches. But the Time Stop, like I said, it basically involves you having a... Having a, a bottle with an item in it and having it out as if you like you just caught the I, just caught the item you have in the bottle. As I use the fairy here as, as a good example, and then you get on this switch and face away from the temple, and then you don't have to backflip onto the switch. I just like doing that. And then you lock and shield and try to use the fairy at the same time, and then you walk to the switch. What's weird about this is your controls are actually reversed. 
It's doing it again. I can't hit C up. That's very strange. I can't hit any other buttons. Uh, can I Zora Mask? No. Can I Ocarina? I can't use... I don't think we use any kind of buttons. I've done this before. Okay, I think I know what's going on. Okay. So, let me get down and respawn. So, I'm going to have to Song of Soaring again. I know what I know what I'm well, I know what's happening here. Why it's not letting me see up. I just realized. So, try this again. It'll be third time's a charm, hopefully. So, gotta get the fairy again. I sped up a little bit here just to make things go a little faster. Alright. Fairy. In the bottle. Now, the thing I'm doing is that I'm actually grabbing the ledge and pulling myself up. You can't do that. That's the thing that's messing me up. Because it, because when you do that, it dims your buttons. And that's what's not allowing me to use C up. So you basically have to make it to the platform, make it to the block, without... You have to make make the jump without without grabbing the ledge. Okay, okay. Now I guess the one thing I didn't explain this for really that that um good last time, but basically, but when you're doing this, your controls are reversed. So basically, I'm holding down now and going forward, and everything. It's it's like the camera was basically it's like the camera was pointing the other way. Um. It's still not letting me do C up. This is very weird. I thought that was... I thought that was what I was doing wrong. Nope. Um, I've done this trick before. What's going on? Um... Hmm. I don't know what's going on here. I swear, this tr I know I've done this trick before, and I gotta get the fairy again. I know, I've seen this trick before, and I've done it before, but I don't know why it's not letting me hit C up. That's very, very strange, because usually when you hit C up, that's when the the uh, cutscene will cancel, and then if you're on the block, the block will take you back around. Ah, uh, crud. Come on. One more time. Alright, on to here. Backflip onto the switch. Lock and shield, and then fairy. Still not letting me hit C up. What is going on? It's not letting me use anything. I mean, I can pause and unpause. Okay, no, that doesn't work. If I grab the ledge, then I pause. All my buttons will return to normal. But it still doesn't mean I can use them. C up isn't isn't used. I can't. I can shield. But locking, but uh, locking doesn't. Z targeting doesn't do anything except make my A button spaz out like crazy. That's all that's doing. And I can roll. I can't backflip or side hop. It doesn't look like. Up oh, and then I jumped off. That's just very weird that it's doing being doing weird stuff like this. I could have sworn that it would work right. Either way, that's what time stop supposed what time stop supposed to do. Like I said, it's like I was trying to explain, is you do that and you get on top of the block and hit C up, and it should cancel the time stop, and then you'll be riding the block back to the other side, and you'll be on the other side, no problem. I don't know why it's not allowing me to use C up though. That's very very strange. Um. Anyway, I guess that does it for this uh part of uh, Majora's Mask. Uh, Shenanigans, I guess, of, is a better title for this. Thought of this the other day. I mean, messing around with Majora's Mask, that's an okay title, but I think Majora's Mask Shenanigans, that's a better word. Shenanigans is a cool word anyway. 
So I guess um, I'll sign off here. I don't have any plans to do a fourth a fourth part. I pretty much covered everything that I could possibly cover. If you need any more information, like I said, I'll be putting there's a link in the description. I will be putting a uh, link to a uh, article about the weird shot, and you can also look up other tricks as well, as, like the gainer and the uh, time stop as well there, and the infinite sword glitch and all that. So, I guess I'll sign off here, and I will see you guys next time, probably in Minecraft, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm not sure what I'll do next. But I'll see you guys then. Bye now.